Welcome everybody into the first episode of the Respawn Podcast, first official episode anyway. My name is Joey Olberding. I'm Colin Rhodes. And I'm Ethan Palladino. And uh, welcome in Ethan. You are our guest of honor for this week. And um, you are a caster. You're a caster primarily for League of Legends. Is that correct? That's true. Yes, I am the League of Legends caster. I am the League of Legends caster. The, You're the yeah. League of Legends caster. Of all time. The, the League commentator I'm, of all time. I'm the League commentator of all time. That's true. How how did you get into that? So I started casting as a whole when I was in high school. I did that for traditional sports for two and a half years. Um, came up to Mizzou and was looking for more positions like that but couldn't really find any. Uh, and then I threw my roommate, Alex, uh, he introduced me to league itself, uh, and I got super involved with the game and then got really, really into the competitive side really early on. Uh, and then Alex started working on broadcasts for Mizzou Esports and then asked me if I wanted to cast, um, thought it sounded like fun. That was a year ago, two years ago, year and a half. Um, and it's kind of been up since there. Continue casting for Mizzou. Now I cast for the NECC Collegiate League as well. It's been it's been fun. Cool. Um, when did you start playing League? Two years ago? Uh, two years ago this December. Yeah. You remember the exact date and everything? No, you don't. No. <laughs> exact date? No. It was... Yeah, I think Alex says the 9th. That sounds right. <laughs> exactly. I remember I was... I do remember it was decently a few days into December because I was back home, I think, when I got it. And then... Yeah, December sometime before my birthday. You said you just instantly got into the competitive side of things? Pretty fast, yeah. Uh, it only took me a few months of playing before I got into... I know I watched the next split that came on, which was, what, spring 2021. Mm -hmm. um, so a few months after that, I was into it. Um, yeah, pretty pretty fast anyways. Yeah, that is... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'd call that rare or not, because I was also a similar way. Like, when I started playing in seventh grade... Um, I actually watched LCS before I played the game and I had no idea what was yeah. going on, <laughs> but I was like, this is so cool, yeah. you know? Um, and then I started playing it. Um, do you think that the competitive nature of it, like attracted you to the game or do you think it's the other way around? Oh, for sure. I like the competitive nature of it. I've always been someone who's been interested in like doing competitive stuff. Like I played sports all throughout my mm -hmm. childhood into high school. Uh, after I stopped playing sports in high school, I went into other competitive things. I've always done public speaking, so I did like speech and debate, and I did DECA. Oh, cool. Um, just because I think there's always been a part of my brain that's like, I want to prove I'm the best at something. And so being able to have like a competitive format like League kind of gave me that, and then seeing the competitive aspect of it where these guys are trying to prove the same thing interested me. Yeah, so for you, it's it's interesting, though. For you, because it's not... I mean, was it a thing of like, oh, like these guys can be the best, like I want to be the best, you know, like them, like in terms of playing the game or was it always like a, a, a casting thing per se? Of like, it's pretty uh, much always been casting just because that's uh -huh. what I enjoy. Um, I've always, since I started my first football stream when I was 15, um, doing play by play for my high school, I've always really liked casting. Um, and I knew that I probably wasn't going to get to the point to play professionally just because yeah. I knew I got in like when I was decently older, most of those guys start playing like when I, they were younger than I was when I started playing. Um, but I knew that because I was watching so much of it and retaining so much information, it was pretty much all I was watching for like an entire year almost, that I wanted to be involved some way. And mm -hmm. I was already, I felt like good at being able to cast. So it was about like learning more about the basics of the game and how professional casters do it so that i could become involved in the same way so for you is it more of a thing of like i want to be the best caster yeah cool pretty okay. much i mean i there's a lot of guys i look up to that i don't know if i could like reach that level but that's the goal is to one day be in that same kind of like recognition with those names i'm yeah. sure you can i'm sure you definitely can um i remember i read and uh, like a, a a twit long or whatever they're called um by uh i forgot who the exact caster was it might have even been Cadrol. Um, but he said, uh, he was like responding to a question of how should I become a professional caster? And he was like, just cast. He was like, that's all you need to do. Yeah. Like, if you want to be a professional caster, like just cast right now, you know, just keep doing it. Uh, so it sounds like you're on the right path. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what I, I kind of have a funny story related to that. So when we went to Chicago for LCS finals for this last summer split, um, I ran into Cubby. Um, outside of a bar in the United Center. He's an amateur caster for the LCS. Cool. Uh, he does collegiate stuff as well. And 
got a picture with him, talked to him for a little bit, and then DM'd him on Twitter after. And I was like, hey, I do you know, collegiate casting. I want to get more involved. I want to do this as a career. What do you recommend? And he like talked to me for like 30 minutes, uh, gave me a bunch of advice about like what he did. He was like, it kind of sucks. You have to like work for free for the first six months, yep. uh, but you have to build a reel. You have to prove that you can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, He's like, I worked for, I want to say, he mentioned like Unified and someone else. He's like, reach out to them. Uh, they always have stuff going on. They need casters. Um, just build up and prove to other people that you can do it. And then that'll get you in the door to kind of making more progress. Yeah. As somebody who's trying to go into casting myself, you know, I really do think that casting is the easiest way to get good at casting because, you know, you can yeah. study as much tape as you like. You can uh, take in as much information about a sport or a game or whatnot. But the trick to casting isn't naming off a bunch of terminologies and, you know, what have you. It's about putting it all together and creating a coherent narrative. And that's something that I really like about casting as well, being able to sort of shape the script, but not really Mm -hmm. shape something uh, the way it's presented and like sort of shape history in a way. That's something I really like about, you know, uh, classic sports broadcasting and like big moments and stuff like that. Um, and, And that's what I look at. Uh, when when broadcasting which which is sort of interesting how we sort of have similar thoughts on casting but also different ones yeah um and as someone who knows next to nothing about (laughs) league i really i really respect you in the sense that i don't really know what's happening but i'm glad you do yeah uh (laughs) i think one of the things that i like the most about like casting and because i pull a lot of inspiration from like high level casters so when i first started even still now i watch a lot of like captain flowers i watch a lot of cadrill uh and medic from europe Mm -hmm. um just because i like the way they cast so much that it's kind of how i model the way i do it they just provide a ton of like energy because league in itself has moments that are like very visually exciting but a lot of those can get lost at times, mm-hmm. but if you have someone that's as talented as those three guys are at painting a picture and like bringing more energy to a moment, um, it just like enhances the broadcast that much more. And so that's kind of how I like to model what I do. Yeah, uh, there's also a lot of time. In, there's a lot of dead time in League yeah. Two, right? There's a lot of time when there's just nothing going on. Um, in Europe, they are cheering um, when people kill wards, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> because the games can be just so slow. Yeah. Um, but it's so fun, right? You know, it's just it's like a little mini game they have, and they cheer um, when Rift Herald gets it takes mm-hmm. the tower. You know, um, so there's also like that other aspect of it. Um, I also like how Joey's talking about changing history. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a that's a real thing, though. I mean, like it, it's as it's as Ethan was saying before, like the excitement of a caster makes a moment bigger, and if yep. you aren't exciting in a big moment, then like sometimes those huge moments can get lost to time i mean like you you can you can laugh at me all you want but it's a very (laughs) real thing and you know i i don't know it's interesting to me it's something i find fascinating personally no it definitely is uh i think of like i I don't i don't don't know any like historic like actual sports casters off the top of my head but i think of like huge moments and like you think of um you know the caster as well like you know being so excited over whatever do you have an example yeah yeah so one that i was uh just thinking of was uh, one of the classic moments in baseball history, baseball is my favorite sport, I, I apologize, um, <laughs> but uh, 1988 World Series, uh, game one between the Los Angeles Dodgers and Oakland A's, um, it is the bottom of the ninth, it's a tie game, and uh, up to the plate steps Kirk Gibson, whose leg is basically like completely mutilated, he's <laughs> injured, and he steps up to the plate and hits a walk-off home run off one of the best closers not only in the league at that time but in baseball history Mm -hmm. it's a walk-off home run off of him and Vin Scully who died a few months ago um often considered to be the greatest uh sports caster of all time just puts it so simply I don't believe what I just saw and like you can make a moment so uh so um you can capture a moment really with just like the intensity of the broadcast because that moment would be remembered but it wouldn't be remembered as one of the greatest moments in the history of a 200 year old sport yeah uh, or whatever since since that so yeah i mean for league there's pretty much all of those like iconic moments that i think of are attached to like casters who are like i mean you think of like the faker both faker plays are attached to like huge caster moments from flowers or the 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 Mm z1v1 and then you have just like Captain Flowers base race, all of these different things that are like huge moments, like iconic moments. And they're all met with like incredible depictions from the casters behind them who just like provide that other element that entices the viewer. Yeah, 100%. Um, 
the faker what was that is what comes to mind <laughs> faker, <obviously. laughs> what was that yeah just <laughs> crazy um and then the uh the cassette and back door um, yeah what That's was his a good name one. i forget his name the flowers rap god clip that wasn't ex peke was it it was it was ex peke okay, yeah. yeah it was ex peke the flowers rap. What do you? What the flowers rap got is the same clip. That's what like it's referenced oh, as because he's just okay. talking at max speed for two full minutes and then he nearly passes out when the play ends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Worlds is going on right now. It is. It's very exciting. Oh, yeah. I who's the favorite? I I don't know anything about. Uh, it. it was Gen G. I don't know if it's still Gen G because they lost, but it might be top esports. Probably JDG. Just teams from the East. So. This is a hot take. I think it's Fnatic. Fnatic it's is so fanatic. good. No, yeah. <laughs> Humanoid might be the best player in the world <laughs> I right now. I don't think he is. Dude, he gapped. He just gapped Faker. Like, I don't know. He's gapped every Faker's, mid laner in the tournament. Faker's in a different position now. Faker's no longer on SKT as the guy who needs to carry. He's been playing Akali. Yeah, but that's not his, like, he doesn't have to be that guy every game anymore. They well, have the best top laner in Korea. They had, at one point, the best bot lane duo in Korea. Probably mm. not anymore, because I think Ruler and the Hands are better. But all of those, and the I mean, top two jungler, if not... Uh, he's probably behind Canyon. Yeah. But he can play those carry champs. Like, if you're going to blind pick his ear, he'll play Akali. Uh-huh. And, like, he can play Silas or whatever. But he can also play, like, Galio or Lissandra and make, like, Karma, massive right? plays. Yeah, and yeah. be fine. Yeah. Um, the way T1 plays has changed a lot. Oh, yeah. uh, after their last game yesterday, uh, because they had... They beat... Uh, who do they play first? I forget. I think they beat Gen G, right? Or yeah, maybe, they beat... It was either Gen G or I think it was Damwon JDG or someone. Uh, no, Gen G's not. It might have been Damwon. Uh, they, anyways, they beat the first team in 21 minutes, yeah. and then they lost their second game in 21 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so they're extremely like coin flippy in a way yeah. um, how they play right now, which is just really interesting from like a super super established organization. Yeah. Probably the most established. Oh, for like, sure. T one. I mean, most historic organization in all of. I mean, probably all of esports. I can imagine. I don't know if there's. I mean, league is just like objectively probably the biggest esport in the world it is yeah. and then it is definitely with like that story of an organization yeah, i mean there's the other Valorant, ones that come close. Valorant's on the rise I mean. yeah it but there's no, Valorant's just so new yeah it's too new i don't know if there's any i mean i know like starcraft has been around forever but i never really think of like an organization yeah exactly. well, when it comes well, to starcraft come out it's coming up on its 11th or 12th year it was like it was in it was in beta in 2009 yeah from production that just told us <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're hearing word from the <laughs> production staff that he, he just coughed uh, 2000 it yeah. sounded like 2009. Uh, a little bird appeared on my shoulder <laughs> yeah. and whispered into my ears oh, exactly just to backtrack a little bit i also really liked how joey was talking about um or you as well like the narrative behind casting like i mean at its core it's just storytelling yeah you know um yeah. just like pretty much all of journalism is mm-hmm. um which is really interesting that because I, I don't know anything about casting but I do a lot of journalism, and you guys also talk about this storytelling aspect that comes into casting as well, which is just, it's really cool. I mean, it's one of the most, like, intriguing parts, I think, for me when I listen to casters for League is all of the best ones have these, like, one-liners or things they're able to just, like, rip off off the top of their head that provide, like, so much more than they need to. Like, it's not something that's required. You're not going to see everyone at every level, like, come up with these creative things to say in these moments. But the people who do it the best are the ones doing that consistently. Yeah, that's the thing about casting that's most insane to me, that people can just, like, off the top of the dome, just, like, say stuff like yeah. that. I try to. It's very hard. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I try to, too. It's, like, it's, it's, it's tough because you're on the spot. You're trying to call a moment, but you're also trying to be, like, entertaining mm-hmm. while also being, like, informative uh that's why play by play is so tough and like you know i have a lot of respect to anybody no matter how bad they do for even like trying you know it's it's not it's not easy at all and colors colors uh not that easy either yeah but yeah play by play for league is because i've casted pretty much every like traditional sport that you can cast and league is by far the hardest thing to cast that i've ever done really so the way i always put it and i would always tell anyone is when i was doing traditional sports like i did for two years with football basketball baseball anything soccer whatever uh it's honestly like there is an element of having to talk quickly Mm -hmm. um but it's pretty much just follow the ball like if you're casting if you're doing play-by-play for a football game it's like all right they hand the ball off to the running back just follow that guy with league and if there's like an early game where there's like a 2v2 bot lane and then like jungler against top at the same time, you have to attempt to keep track of both 
and mm -hmm. cast them both at the same time. Or you'll have like it happens pretty rarely, but like last year when I, with Alex and I casting, there's fights that go on for like two minutes. And I'm just having to like perpetually yeah. keep talking for two minutes and like keep my energy up and like <laughs> not pass out from like not being able to breathe. You can't even take a breath. Yeah. Uh, it's so much harder just because there's more to follow and there's just like more mechanics and things you have to pay attention to as well. It's it's uh, also uh, I would also like to mention in traditional sports, there are usually like built in breaks. Yeah. So like you think about baseball, since we keep going back to that, you know, in between you, mean you keep going back to that. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm not keeping track. Um, I, yeah. And, uh, you know, between each pitch, there's like 20, 25 seconds of just like dead yeah. air or even in like basketball or hockey when the when the ball's not over the half court line or the puck's not over the half court line it's sort of a natural place for color to come in so play by play can take a break um and part of that is maybe because like casting for those games and sports have been has been sort of like mastered but also at the same time i feel like league's been around a while and i just think it really is that complicated there are just so many moving parts because you know it's it's such a big battlefield in a sense mm -hmm. i mean like if you imagine league in real life, that would be big. Um, <laughs> it would be. But uh, yeah, so I don't really know what you mean by that. There's, a, yeah, okay. there's a drag, a space dragon, Colin. He would big. be huge. Oh my gosh! Uh, I like how you bring up mastered as well, because the other thing about league and I guess esports in general is it's it's rapidly changing, right? So like. The, like new stuff comes into every season and like the casters have to master like this new aspect of the game just as the players do mm -hmm. uh, and so it's never really the same you know it's never like mastered i guess you could say where traditional sports is like football hasn't changed in however many years yeah. long you know there might be like a tweak change in the rules but the way the game played is it hasn't really been changed yeah. in a while yeah mm -hmm. it's interesting that you bring that up because i i honestly haven't really thought about that but like even the game i was watching yesterday um, probably the best game of worlds from yesterday was the game. The last the game. last game. Yeah, that was with a really JDG good game. and Dam Wan, I think. But uh, JDG eighty carry goes in solo with Kai Salt, nearly kills himself, flashes away, and only lives because there's a hexgate behind him. Mm. And that's brand new. That's never been in the game for the last ten years. That was just added yep. coming into the season, and it is the only reason they didn't lose the game. Mm -hmm. And so to keep track of those things and have to like constantly, like you said, like with traditional sports, there's tweak changes in rules, but you're not going to see anything major. Mm -hmm. There is potentially entirely meta shifting changes every two weeks in League of Legends. Yep. And so you have to pay attention to those things or you're going to have no clue what's going on. Yeah. And a really good caster might have kept track of the Hexgate, but like I guarantee I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't watch it. Um, I wasn't listening to it at least. But I guarantee that the caster who was casting that moment did not like was not calling out that that was going to yeah. happen, you know, because yeah. that's just another thing that like he has to keep track of that's new, right? And it also speaks to the players, you know, at Worlds for being able to like handle a change so fast. I mean, you have to train so hard just to understand how something like that can change the entire complexion of a game, and you know, uh, I that's also impressive and. It makes it makes league once again very complicated mm -hmm. since it's always changing and it's very fluid as far as uh, competitive esports or sports in general go. Yeah, 160 champs. Is there a traditional sport that has no pauses? Like, is is rugby even one, or is there are there out of bounds in rugby? Uh, I mean, because I know like there's penalties soccer, in hockey. I guess. Yes. Yeah, but, but there's there's soccer goes out, soccer. soccer goes out of bounds though. Like that's yeah, even like sure. a break for the casters. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess that's true. And there's also there's penalties. Half -time. Um, that's a good question. I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. I Maybe mean, like water polo. I, th I think every. <laughs> I, I really don't know. I think every horse racing. I think every. <laughs> uh, honestly, that's a great. That's a great example. <laughs> but be. horse racing is like. What the races are like a minute yeah. long, yeah. maybe if even. I think every sport, if it didn't already, uh, during the rise of like commercials and television broadcasts, I think there became more built-in breaks. So you know, yeah. there could be commercials. Like I, I'm sure that yeah. say. I'm pretty sure baseball didn't used to have a seventh inning, inning stretch or whatever, and I know football definitely didn't used to have a two minute warning, mm -hmm. um, but that got put in for TV time. So. Yeah, that's actually really funny you mentioned that because they added those breaks just for advertising. Mm -hmm. Whereas in league, I don't know if it's in any other esports, but we just threw the advertising into the yeah. game. Yeah. <laughs> like imagine having the Red Bull home run. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the, but the in Red league, you know, we, we don't have any breaks, so they had to throw the advertising because they need the advertising. Mm -hmm. 
They just threw yeah. it in the game. So, like, stuff that happens in the game is sponsored by companies, which think, is just so funny. Yeah, I think that is really, really funny. It's it's a good bit. Um, yeah, but but it really speaks to how, like, I, it's it's impressive how they got around the boundary then. And yeah. It's, you know, League is still able to advertise, and in a very <laughs> funny way. The House of the Dragon way. Soul? That's House of the Dragon Soul, yes, House that's that's a good one. Good. Or the, they'll put just ads on banners in the map, so randomly, like you subconsciously just see like a BMW yeah. ad. Well, they do that in uh, in soccer and hockey. Oh as yeah, well. I guess there is mm-hmm. stuff like on the um, court. Yeah, but it's not like I guess nearly as prominent. Right? Yeah. It's definitely not as nearly as prominent. You know, that would be kind of cool though if they had like the State Farm like power play for yeah. hockey like that. That would be kind of cool. I guess it wouldn't be cool, but it would be, you know. <laughs> yeah, how cool, how cool is advertising, really? Yeah, NHL needs to add me to their marketing team. That's yeah, what it would make them so much money. <laughs> they, uh, they would. They would make, <laughs> imagine being the first company to own the power play. Well, in, so much money. Yeah, in, sure. in the MLS, they have a team called the New York Red Bulls, and they're oh. sponsored by Red Bull. That's so true. There really? You go. Yeah, and I know it's a <laughs> huge thing in... Um, in Korea, Korean baseball, like half the teams are just companies. So like you have the Samsung mm. whatevers or like the LG whatever. And it's sort of interesting because you could never imagine like, you know, uh, an NBA team being like the Toyota uh, cars yeah. or whatever. <laughs> I mean, that's happening in esports as well. They have, oh, it's yeah. yeah team Liquid have, Honda. Yeah. Oh, team yeah. team Solomid FTX, yeah. right? FTX, <laughs> FTX. Uh, that is really interesting. I wonder, I mean, I don't know. A part of me wondered if we will just eventually, all the teams will just be companies. But, like, the organizations <laughs> also are sponsoring themselves in a way. You yeah. know, like, they are their own. Yeah. Like, um, like I'm, I'm sure I'm sure FaZe Clan, like, you know, they don't need to be, av- to be, like, sponsored by whomever. I mean, everybody would like to be sponsored. But I don't think they have to become the, the Red Bull FaZe Clan or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I guess TSM. I mean, TSM is a huge organization. Yeah. I guess they had to be... TSM FTX in order you to be get sponsored in on the crypto by FTX. Boom. Hey. Crypto yeah. is huge. You got to jump in. I don't see any <laughs> yeah, potential problems with I that. Know. I, I just don't know how great of an idea it is to change your entire organization name. I don't know. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Well, especially like, I mean, for organizations like TSM and like Team Liquid, like you've been TSM for so long. Yeah. yeah. And then Team Liquid's like, hey guys, we're actually Team Liquid Honda now. Yeah. It's, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Imagine changing the New York Yankees to the New York Yankees. <laughs> FTX yeah. or whatever. Like, that, that would enrage so many people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> New really York would. Yankees it Burger really King. <laughs> but, but the thing is, people get, like, people get, like, um, attached to their sponsorships. Like, there was a huge, like, controversy, like, a year ago because the uh, stadium or the arena the Lakers play in was the <laughs> Staples Center, and they changed it to the Crypto Center. Uh, Crypto.com. Oh. Crypto.com. Crypto. 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 And everybody was so pissed. It's a horrible name. It is a horrible name, but it's funny how they were like, no, we want Staples back. That's <laughs> yeah. the company we support. Yeah. Uh, though obviously it's crypto, so good, good on them. Yeah. But still, that's funny. I just think the fact that they like made the conscious decision to keep .dot com. Yeah, you could have yeah. just called it like the Crypto Center, mm-hmm. but you were like, it's got to be .dot com. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> probably enraged friends more. Yeah, I mean, anything. even in the NBA though, as of a couple of years ago, they like started including logos on jerseys. Like, that's true. I want to say it might be. The Lakers that have FTX on their logo on their jersey. Have yeah, they it's ever somebody. had logos I think so, before? Right? Well, like advertisements. Oh, no, yeah. They, they the NBA is all about crypto. Like everybody loves <laughs> crypto in the NBA. Yeah, yeah they, they well, have, the Lakers especially. Yeah, they, they they'll have like crypto like logos on their patches on their jerseys. Like teams will be sponsored by crypto. Uh, I don't know manufacturers. Is that just the NBA? Uh, that has like actual ads on yeah. their yeah. Yeah, I think so. Of the four major, re- like is it major just the NBA that's sports? into crypto? <laughs> I'm sure. I think reason. there's other like. I mean, there was crypto sponsors of the last Super Bowl, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah. There was yeah, that there QR were. code ad. Yep, yep, yeah, yep. yeah. But yeah. even still, that's that's a little different because it's one thing to see an ad for cryptocurrency. It's another thing to see an ad for cryptocurrency on LeBron James's jersey. Yeah, you know. That's yeah, true. it's another thing for your favorite team TSM to rename to <laughs> cryptocurrency TSM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember I saw that. I saw like the TSM FTX, and I was like, "What the hell is that?" And I was like, "Oh, this is stupid." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny because in for, well, for league specifically, they cannot call themselves TSM FTX. They're still just TSM. Because FTX has their own sponsorship through League, through the LCS. So TSM is just TSM in the LCS. Because there's the FTX Gold Advantage. Because the FTX uh, is like an overall sponsor. 
so they can't also be just a TSM sponsor. Yeah. So in every other eSport, it's TSM FTX, but in the LCS, it's just TSM. That's oh. that's really interesting. I did not I did not realize that. It would be an unfair that. advantage if they yeah. sponsored and also <laughs> sponsored the whole event. Yeah. <laughs> I guess yeah, that would be unfair. <laughs> no no other region has a cryptocurrency sponsoring showing you which team is winning in gold. Just saying. North American supremacy. FTX gold advantage. <laughs> we go. do have the most money. <laughs> <laughs> that's well It doesn't really translate to skill, no, unfortunately. Unfortunately not. I think we do have the most money. Uh, I don't know. There's just so many more. There's so much more people, though. I, and those, and like in the East, there's so much more interest. Yeah, but we are so like business oriented. That's true. I guess there is more sponsors. I there is say. definitely more sponsors. Like Honda. Uh, I mean, all of pretty much all of the sponsors in LCS. I feel like are more. Yeah, all the major money. orgs, anyways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's also like obviously esports are growing like rapidly over time. I mean, who knows how long until like it really it really uh, takes off, and it already is. But you know. Even still, like, I've heard more about Worlds this year than I have about the entirety of the MLB season. Like, from people just on the street. That so, makes sense. There yep. you go. Yeah. Um, I saw some statistic. I don't know if it's true or not. But it said that LCS was the third most money-making sports organization in the U.S., um, which is just really insane. Well, it has a whole niche captured. I mean, like, mm -hmm. you know, no, nothing else. I mean, maybe, maybe football, but... That's like that's the only thing. Like anybody who you know spends their weekends on Twitch or whatever, are probably going to be tuned in in some way and are interested in esports. They're going to be tuned into worlds. Like how, you know, suburban family is going to turn on, uh, you know, the Cowboys game on Sunday or whatever. So yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, I think an interesting thing that even traditional sports have started to jump into, like streaming on Twitch or like. They mm -hmm. have I, the NFL does yeah, the NFL Prime Day balls. stuff, right? Yeah, that's on Twitch now. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think another interesting element is it allows. I guess I don't know how it is for um, like the major sports that have put stuff on Twitch, or I think Major League Baseball does stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, there's an element of like the people watching can interact with one another. Like yes. uh, the, yeah. the 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 chat is like honestly like kind of just a cesspool like there's not much <laughs> in it it's all just like spam and stuff like that yeah. but it is like provides another element of like you can see these people and like what they're typing what they're doing yes it, it is just a means for the audience to feel like they are yeah. engaging with the content more than just watching it yeah which is why like um i went to new york last week and we went to like the best media the top media companies of the world um new york times wall street journal financial times ap you name it they got at CNBC and they were all like talking like how do we reach this new younger audience like through our news media like through our podcasts and on Twitch it's just like it's just more engaging and like that's all they want that's what they want like they want their users to be engaged and feel engaged yeah. with whatever content they're 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 getting right like yeah. that's why we have um, comment sections on articles right mm -hmm. but like imagine if you could comment like on the live news like while it's live and have the know? newscasters be able to see it too exactly and interact i mean that's as good of a marketing tactic as you're gonna get i mean that's yeah it's ingenious i mean really. there's probably more but like right now like i really think that we are heading into like a twitch kind of domination mm -hmm. when it comes to pretty much like all media um i think that like I don't know if it will happen, but like I think it's a very real possibility that live TV just moves over to Twitch because their audience is more engaged. That's that's actually it's a, not going to happen soon, but no, but but that's interesting. I haven't heard that before. I think I think there's something to that, honestly. Yeah, um, even like not just Twitch too, like YouTube Live, um, TikTok yeah, Live, you know, Instagram you. Live. Like yeah. it's all live now, and Twitch has like the best live platform yeah. out there. Mm -hmm. Everyone else kind of just like even YouTube pretty much just copies what Twitch does and yeah, tries yeah. to fix it and make things better. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be like too surprised. I definitely think as the years go by, there's definitely less and less interest in live television. And I think it's just like kind of natural nature for companies like that that are in a dying genre to move on to something else if they want to still be around. Like there's still going to be a market for like traditional news. But where that is, like, what platform that is on, I think is like very likely to start. I mean, it's been shifting forever. Yeah. They, they moved to like live streaming on their website years and years ago. Yeah. Most mm -hmm. most stations did. So to assume they wouldn't keep doing that is kind of absurd. Yeah, when we went to the Wall Street Journal, they said that um, 
they were actually on Reddit, like heavily on Reddit. Um, and they had like an insane amount of success on Reddit because the Reddit people can talk to the reporters who are mm-hmm. reporting on whatever topic they want to talk about and just have a full blown conversation with them. And like, it was a reporter's job for like the entire day to just run a Reddit thread and just respond to every single person. And they said like the engagement and everything was just super, super up. The numbers were insane. And then they stopped doing it. And we were like, <laughs> why did you stop yeah. doing it? Yeah. And they were like, well, you know, other stuff to do. But like, you know, if but, they want to reach these younger audiences, like somewhere like Reddit um, or Twitch or even like Discord, right? It's yeah. a super, super great avenue. It, it is interesting what you say though, because like imagine being a reporter and responding to every single person, but even still you're only responding to like 150 people. Like that's a lot of engagement, but at what cost, you know? It really makes makes your product... Um, more niche than it probably should be. So even though that's a great um, way to build engagement and to build interest, it's also, um, you know, it's a lot of effort for maybe not as much feedback as you'd like. Maybe. I mean, it it really depends. Like there could have been a thousand responses on the Reddit and like there's no way the reporter just gets to all of them, you know? Um, But I think 150 is even like fine. I also don't think, I don't, really know too much how reddit works but i don't Mm -hmm. i think it's more so like people watching conversations happen Mm -hmm. rather than people like everybody's asking a question that's true that's true i might be wrong i'm not no i i think you're right i mean i i wouldn't imagine everybody ever is gonna post something in a reddit thread or whatever Mm -hmm. so yeah that that makes sense um their biggest engagement one was it was a reporter um stationed in ukraine covering the ukraine war and he was like i'm in ukraine covering the war ask me anything you want about Mm -hmm. the war i'm an expert on it i've been reporting on it the entire time and uh, people were asking questions right yeah like why why wouldn't you and they had those amas on like twitter too and stuff like that i think Mm -hmm. They might have it on like Instagram, maybe. I don't know. I don't use Instagram, but yeah, they have it on all these different platforms. So they get all these different like audiences interested too. Yeah, and it actually, yeah, that's good. Good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Engagement is good. Engagement is good. All right. Should we really get to the mean potatoes of this whole podcast? The mean potatoes. Yes. Did you think about that last night in your bed? <laughs> I no, I can't say You're, I did. You didn't think about your transition. That's what. Uh, no. That's what people. That's like it wasn't an argument, but that's what people were saying about Captain Flowers because he has all these like quick one liners. Oh, I yeah. definitely think of stuff <laughs> beforehand. No. Yeah, it is like does he just like sit awake in his bed like <laughs> thinking about what to say whenever yeah, yeah. a Kaisel comes <laughs> through? No, that's what casters do. Yeah. That, that literally is what casters. There's do. There's no way. Are no, you serious? Yeah, casters yeah, will. Yeah, I 100 percent have like it's hard for me to do just because I really don't have that much experience doing it, and I think of a lot of the stuff I say off the top of my head. But it's very common for like you will have some stuff you say off the top of your head, but there's stuff that you like think of in advance and you're like, okay, I'll just like write that down and just like keep track of it. Maybe mm. you use it, maybe you don't, mm. but you know it's a good line that if it's applicable will like again just like bring more to the broadcast. So it's not just like an on the spot thing. It He's, usually is, but it usually is. There's a lot of times where it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I would say most of the like professional casters come up with a lot of that stuff like beforehand. Mm-hmm. Though there's like a very rare few like gifted individuals who can just do it off the top of their head like that. I don't believe what I just saw a thing I mentioned earlier, Vince Scully. Mm-hmm. Everything he did was off the top of his head. He has like a million legendary like things that he said, and they all came from the top of his head. And it's just like, how do you do that? Um, just a master improv which is why I say it's like I respect anybody who can do anything like that ever because like it really is a master of improv thing yeah I actually wanted to ask this question to you two since you guys are so into casting I'm not sure but in esports at least I've never seen a caster go all the way up and become a professional caster for the LCS or whatever esports and then drop back down has that ever happened Mm, I mean, I don't think I've seen it either. I don't think it's impossible. Um, I know there's like people who probably work their way up and then maybe just like fall out of it. Like there was just recently Pastry Time announced that he's not going to be casting anymore. Uh I don't know if that was his decision or if it was Riot's decision. If it was the LCS, we probably won't ever know. Um, But I don't think it's like impossible, but I think it's really unlikely. Like the odds that you would be able to get to the highest point and be a part of the LCS or LPL, LCK, and then they'd be like, actually, we don't want you anymore, is like really unlikely just because you've already had to go through so many other channels to get there. Um, But I assume it's like possible. 
that, that applies to other sports as well like the biggest casters like a uh, kevin harlan or whatever um that does like the super bowl or whatever i mean they've been doing there's big broadcasts for 30 years yeah you know and they've never like stopped basically they've been doing that for 30 years straight because once you hit the apex there's nowhere else to go and yeah. you're not going to be brought back unless you get like canceled or something yeah i guess so. it's not really a thing of like oh someone better came along no, exactly. And I mean, those guys are, so, I mean, at the very top, like you're very hard pressed to find someone who's going to do a better job than like your medic, Captain Flowers, yeah. uh, Dagda, Lyric, all those guys. Like it's very difficult to find people who are going to, like you can confidently say 10 out of 10 times, they'll do a better job. All right. What's our meat and potatoes, I guess Joey? The, the meat and potatoes is, of course, the Super Mario Bros. <laughs> movie. <laughs> no. <laughs> a new uh, trailer dropped a few days ago uh, for the Super Mario Bros. movie done by Illumination. What's the deal with it? <laughs> what? what is the deal? What's the deal with Airlines? What's food? the deal <laughs> with the new Mario movie trailer? Yes, we are the first people to talk about this. And That's I want to hear your thoughts, Colin Rhodes. Um, I don't Colin think... just watched it like an hour ago I, for I the first time. just watched it before the podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I wanted to do it that way. Um, I like, uh, I don't know, it's hard. People used to really like Chris Pratt, especially yes. on Parks and Rec. Yeah. People loved Chris Pratt. I loved Chris Pratt. I loved Pratt. Chris Pratt. I loved him so much. And then he was a great actor as well. Like uh-huh. super funny, super into himself. Yes. Like everything you want to be with a great actor. And then he got really cocky <laughs> and he started acting like a d- on set. Yeah. And now people do not like him anymore. So I don't <laughs> like, I don't know. That's just like the general consensus I have from pretty much my friends. Like the people I talk to, they don't like him at all anymore. Yeah. And I was like, wait, why don't we like Chris Pratt? But I don't think it was a great idea to have him as Mario. No, I mean, I mean, truly, Chris Pratt fell off. I mean, he, he, he was uh, Andy on Parks and Rec. He was great. And then he was Star-Lord in, uh, yep. in uh, Marvel. And it was, like, pretty good. And then Jurassic he, like, World. And then Jurassic World. And it's like, okay, buddy, you know, like, slow down there. Yeah, he was doing fantastic. Really, really yeah, good. Yeah, but, but then Jurassic World hit. And then he kept being in more and more Marvel stuff. And it feels like the more Marvel stuff you're in, the less characters charismatic you get it's um, true i feel like there was a pipeline really? there no yeah i do like um that's actually really interesting no th- think about it like tom holland like well, tom, th- tom holland when he first like became spider-man was like the darling of everyone and then like last year he did uncharted and it's like okay tom holland <laughs> what yeah. are you doing i mean it's the same thing with um uh, benedict cumberbatch right yeah. he did all of these amazingly good movies, uh, sherlock holmes mm-hmm. and then he did um the one about uh, the war, he was um, depicting codes. I forgot. Yeah, 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 yeah. The imitation game. Imitation game, right? And he was fantastic in these movies. And then he's Doctor Strange, and he's just like flatlined at <laughs> Doctor Strange. Yeah. Uh, he, I don't know if he's been in any. Has he been in anything else besides? He was in uh, Power of the Dog, uh, which was like Oscar nominated last year. But that movie was bad, and I didn't like it. So there you go. <laughs> well, Joey's word is law. So, uh, <laughs> moving true. on. <laughs> Um, the other thing about Chris Pratt is he had the recent Jurassic World movie that was just a complete flop. Like, yeah. I don't know if you saw it, but it was terrible. I heard it was absolutely awful. I could barely watch the movie. The acting was terrible. Mm-hmm. Not Nothing happened in the entire movie. <laughs> I fell asleep. I was watching it with my friends. I fell asleep an hour into the movie, and I woke up at the end, and I was like, oh, what did I miss? And they were like, nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh. I um, mean, give give Super Mario Brothers some credit. There's some there's some okay casting in there. Jack Black as Bowser is pretty good. It's funny. But I think they definitely, especially after hearing Chris Pratt's voice of Mario, you've got to – there's somebody better. For sure. There <laughs> yeah. has to be almost literally anyone else. I mean, I said it before. I'll say it again. Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Where is he? Yeah. <laughs> He's not doing anything right now. We'll, yeah. What Well, what could he possibly be up to right now? <laughs> uh, he's trying to date another 20-year-old. That's, that's what, true. That's what's going on. I was going to make a joke, but I couldn't think of one well, fast it, enough. I, I did it for you. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, yeah, the the casting's interesting because obviously you have a million celebrities, blah, 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 blah. Chris Pratt's obviously the worst one. 
Jack Black is Bowser. I think it's like okay. At least Jack Black's trying. Uh, Keegan Michael Key is Toad, and like you would never imagine that's the guy from Key and Peele. <laughs> that one is pretty. Toad that's a great one. That's a yeah. fantastic and cast. Then, and then Charlie Day is Luigi, and that's just like perfect cast. That's another perfect cast. Yeah. Yes, that's perfect. I think that the whole. I think that Jack Black will be good if he's allowed to like be Jack Black. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If he's allowed to like put some of his own personality into the character, then I think it'll be great. Well, um, at least for people who like Jack Black, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing with celebrity voice acting and why it's like such a hot topic or whatever, because celebrity voice acting is basically just like doing the voice of the celebrity. Like you think about Jack Black in uh, Kung Fu Panda. I mean, he's not playing a panda. He's playing Jack Black, who's yep. a panda. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's not to say he does a bad job. He does a great job because he's doing his Jack Black thing. But yep. like. That's why I'm kind of like iffy on the Bowser voice because he's clearly not trying to be Jack Black, which is good, but also like, I mean, I, I don't know if he like went far enough. I mean, we've only had one trailer, so you know, there's only yeah. so much you can think about. Well, I mean, we'll see with more time. I think I what uh, I was most impressed with his stuff. I thought his part in the trailer looked actually good, mm-hmm. where the rest of it was like pretty bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, like I didn't I mean King Michael Key as Toad is funny, but like yeah. we get one line from him in the trailer. Obviously like Chris Pratt's Mario was like horrendously bad. <laughs> we can talk about that, it doesn't matter. Everybody knows it was gonna be bad. Why doesn't he have an Italian accent? I mean <laughs> why he, couldn't they cast an Italian guy? Yeah, well that's <laughs> one thing, but it's another thing like he hyped up this voice like it was super good. He was like he did like hey it's a me Mario or whatever. That's my Italian voice, by the way. That's um, Mario. <laughs> and um he was like, No no no, that's not the voice. You'll love the voice, it's amazing. And it's it's kind of narcissistic. It's like <laughs> it's your own voice, dude. It's not yeah. it's not that special, it's, it's just a white guy's voice. voice. Like, my voice whatever. is perfect, and he's like we are going to the Mushroom Kingdom. I hope. Uh, did Let's he have, like, go. Italian accent training, even? Like, I, uh, I assume yeah, are, as much. These but... are actors. They're designed to convey emotions of characters that don't exist. And he's just being himself for uh, But Mario. they're not voice actors. Here is, here is my thought about the Mario movie. So, in the trailer, Mario gets, uh, like, blasted out of a warp pipe. He wakes up in the Mushroom Kingdom. That's why mushrooms are everywhere. And he's like, what is this place? <laughs> So here's my thought. What if Mario got sucked into the Mushroom Kingdom and he was just a normal plumber in the in New York and just went into the Mushroom Kingdom? So I'm thinking there is a non-zero chance we get live action Chris Pratt Mario. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You think it's like, uh, oh, what's that? It's like a princess movie. It's called like Enchanted or something where she's like lives in a princess world and then like goes through like a sewer pipe oh, into like yes. New York City. Yeah. They're like the same thing, but with Chris yeah, Pratt. It, yeah, you want to you want to see him with the mustache and the overalls? <laughs> the I want to see him plumbing. Yeah. And he's <laughs> talking to Mario plumbing. Charlie Day, who is Luigi. Yeah. You know, it's a great time. <laughs> exactly. It's a great time. I wish Charlie Day would just do all the characters. Honestly, I think he would do a great job. I think so as well. Yeah. Even if he's just being Charlie Day for all of them, I think it'd be better than Chris Pratt Mario. I agree. It's also it's also Mario, right? It's the Mario movie. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's the entire character. He's obviously going to have the most lines. At least I would think he would. <laughs> um, well. he's, so, I don't know. I think major mistake by whatever company's making that movie. <laughs> yeah, Ill- Illumination, who does not have the best track record. I mean, they made Despicable Me, but they also made, like, Sing. Uh- so you know i heard sing 2 was good i, I didn't see it really? sing was good i heard the sing 2 was i watched sing 1 it was fine people at least really? liked it you yeah, know it, it, it the popular. movie did well so that's I, I have not heard good things about it. i mean i'm not a real i'm not a real illumination head so i can't really speak to that <laughs> I mean, despicable but, uh, me blew up like it made them a bajillion yeah. dollars i i heard the new minions movie was okay and obviously they had like the gentle minions meme or whatever but i just think that's one of those memes that's like manufactured by the company yeah you know and they had a, they made a yeet song for it so they really <laughs> tapped into the kids yeah they they yeah I don't think Colin knows who Yeet is, but... Nope. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. That's okay. I'll play you Yeet's song after okay. this. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, so, Mario. Uh, and and it's interesting, because every video game mu- movie that's, like, ever existed has been terrible. So it's like, I didn't expect this movie is going to be good either, but... I can't even I'm think of other it. ones off the top of my. I mean, Mortal Kombat. I mean, the Sonic movies are the big ones that have come out. Yeah, recently. the Sonic ones. And they were. I think they were okay. Yeah, that's I what I heard. I didn't see them, but like they did okay. 
when I say that. Yeah. Um, but not like good by any means. Like they didn't do great. You know, there yeah. hasn't ever been a really good or fantastic mm-hmm. video game movie. To me, it just looks like one of those movies where you have the normal guy who's just a guy and the charismatic cartoon character, and they meet up, and it's like Alvin and the Chipmunks or or. Uh, or uh, Mr. Popper's Penguins, or one of those, <laughs> but like with Sonic instead. Uh, we were thinking yesterday, Joey, about all of the video game movies in general, uh-huh. and like if there has been a good one. And you named off all of them, and none of them were good. I all can, of them were. I bad. can hardly even think of. I like Mortal Kombat, Sonic. I don't know what else. Yeah, like, we we made a list yesterday. There was me, a there was up. the Uncharted one. They made okay, they made yeah. Tomb Raider movies, and oh, those, were, those bad. were bad. Yeah, um, I heard. I didn't see the Uncharted movie. I there it was. was horrible. I, I saw the one that came out twenty like eighteen or whatever. It was bad. Um, <laughs> it's bad. Go figure. <laughs> uh, and I didn't see the new Mortal Kombat, but I also heard it was just okay. So Alex and I saw Mortal Kombat in twenty twenty, and we both thought it was like at least when we left, we were immediately like, "This is a great movie." Uh-huh. But it was also both of our first times in the movie theater in like two or three years oh, yeah. and it was like empty and it starts off like really slow and you're like huh this is like this is a Mortal Kombat movie you think something happened and then some guy gets like his head sliced off mm-hmm. and you're like this is the greatest thing I've ever seen <laughs> yeah you pop off yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I think thinking back like probably wasn't that good but I thought it was pretty good when I watched it. I think for anything, it's just fan service. It's just yeah. cliche, like fighting, big sword fight, you know? Like, That's true. Just stuff mm-hmm. that the fans want to see, especially like Mortal Kombat fans of all people. So it's, I think it, one of them went on Netflix, I think. I'm not entirely sure, but I watched one of them. I don't know how. And well, it was exactly how I thought of Mortal Kombat. Yeah. <laughs> well, with, with any of those big like action movies that come out nowadays, like like a Mortal Kombat or something, it's all like trying to emulate Marvel. They're trying to emulate the success of Marvel. So they're probably going to have awesome action fights, but they're also going to have like goofy, like, he's right behind me, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. jokes like that, um, which, I mean, that annoys me personally. When is Scorpion from... Mortal Kombat gonna say bruh. <laughs> okay, these are the these are the movies we listed off yesterday. Street Fighter, Warcraft, Sonic movies, Final Fantasy, Tomb Raider movies, I Resident. The Final Fantasy movies were good. Uh, I heard mixed things. Okay. And then there was the Resident Evil movies. Many. And Joey said many. Yes. <laughs> How many? many? Uh, I think there's, there's like six. Yeah. There's oh, like geez. six. And uh, they're, they're, the, the thing is, you would expect the Resident Evil movies to be like spooky, like, mm-hmm. ah, it's horror, but it's really more just like killing zombies with a gun, and it's super <laughs> awesome. It's like <laughs> killing zombies with a gun. Pew, pew, pew. Um, yeah, I'd like rather action. just play the game. Yeah, it's it's whatever. It's very Hollywoodized, uh, like, video game content. So why, Joey? Why are they all terrible? Why are they all terrible? Because they try to emulate the feeling of playing a video game by just watching a movie. Movies are a visual medium, and video games are partially a video game or a video a visual medium but they're also uh i am playing a video game i am doing the game physically so that's why i think movies for the most part try to not you know be a carbon copy of a game like the sonic movies are definitely not like any sonic games they made put uh, they made uh the pokemon detective pikachu movie mm-hmm. and that was about a detective pikachu and that that's not a mainline pokemon game or anything so you know i i think I think that's that's why that's the direction they take. But also, I think they miss something when they basically try to undo everything that makes games fun and try to put and them into, to put a, into movie a movie medium with like tropes and cliches and Ryan Reynolds and what have you. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds. Okay, let me flip the script on you then, Joey. Oh my god. So we're talking about video game movies. What about movie video games? That's 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 a thing. Because those have had actually great success. It's true. And so why? Is it easier? Is it easier, I guess, to transform a movie into a video game? I think it's easier to transform a purely visual medium into a visual medium plus I'm um, shooting the bad guys. Like they yeah, made plus the mechanics of it. You like know, they sure, made whatever. a Godfather video game, and apparently it was good. They made a Scarface video game, and apparently it was good. yeah. I mean, I think of um, I think of Batman games, yeah, Spider Man games, yeah. yeah. Even uh, they made a Guardians of the Galaxy game that got insanely good reviews, which is very surprising. Very. You, you wouldn't think I, that the Guardians of the Galaxy video game would be really good, but I played it. It was very fun. Really? Yeah. Really. You control all of the Guardians. It's a great time. <laughs> I mean, even think of like, all the Lego games. Or like true. yeah yeah they're, those are all great games and they're all based off of like preconceived stories. Yeah, movies. very true. Yeah, yeah. Lego, the Lego Harry Potter. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's it's also interesting that like. 
you can have this highly successful video games and i guess this is just games in general but you can also have like horrendous flops like et which crashed the video game industry in general you know no i don't know actually oh well allow me to educate yourself <laughs> please uh, so in the 80s um atari uh released et the extraterrestrial for the atari 2600 i think and um it flopped so badly that they had to dump like thousands of copies in the game in a Nevada desert to cover up the fact that they were ever produced because otherwise Atari would have completely like gone bankrupt. And, uh, you know, the, the way the video game industry was saved was when Nintendo made Super Mario Bros, not the movie, but the video game. Mm -hmm. Um, and that sort of brought back interest in video games. And here we are today, um, on a Mizzou esports podcast. So thank you, Shigeru Miyamoto. I love you, Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> um, video game movies can also be bad. And uh, there's not that many that are notably bad because most of them are just kind of like shrug, whatever, who cares? I don't remember that existing. Yep. Um, but yeah, so that's why I think it's easier to make a movie video game than it is a video game movie. Do you think that there's some disconnect between, I guess, the directors and the gamers per se well yeah in in the sense that if you're a director you're probably not playing video games every day yeah you're probably watching movies exactly or you know making movies and i'm sure i'm sure that chris pratt hasn't played every mario game you know what i'm saying (laughs) he had a little thing where i'm sure charlie day has i i think charlie day's (laughs) played a video game before i'm not sure chris pratt has i doubt it uh because he he was having this like i i know you didn't see this column but he was like talking about playing mario in the mario movie and he's like yeah think about my days i uh spent playing on the original mario bros arcade game stomping dot 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 koopas (laughs) and uh you know, he really tried to sell it. And it's one that's obviously so corporate, so fake things. And, uh, well, it doesn't make me any happier that Chris Pratt is playing Super Mario from Super Mario Brothers. Um, but it is what it is. So let me ask you a question, Joey. Please. I'm all ears. What will be the first good video game movie? Aye, aye, aye. Uh, that's a tough question. <laughs> we already had a good video aye, game aye, aye. TV show. What's the oh arcane? Arcane. arcane. Yeah. Well, arcane, it is objectively good. Our, our, it is objectively good. That's that's very fair. It did well. <laughs> it won an it award. Did well. It did won well. Awards. Animation is beautiful. Soundtrack it, it, is good. It had uh, enemy, which I think was like a number one hit. Yeah. For but a, for a long time. A Multimedia movie. success. Not a movie. But it's this not a true. movie. Um, League of Legends. What about video game shows? One. Have video game shows been good? Uh, what I mean, video game shows? I mean, there's what came first, the Pokemon show or the Pokemon game? Uh, game. Game for sure. And the show was good, I the think, objectively. I mean, I think the show's it, that still it did going well. on today, so, I mean, that means something. But yeah, it, I think the show did well, so maybe video game shows well, are video, fine. I think, I think the difference between a movie and a show is that a movie, the max length you're going to have is like three hours. That's true. And you kind of can't go over three hours. And if you're making a kid's movie for a video game, it has to be like an hour and a half, two yeah. hours max. While for a show, you can kind of... I mean, like, Arcane had, what, 45-minute episodes? Yeah, and there were and nine there were of like, them? Not even, I don't think. Well, still. That's still longer than like a hour. three-hour movie. Oh, really? Yeah, there were, like, three There were three hour-long episodes that dropped each week for three weeks. Yeah, so that's, a lot that's of what, nine hours? Yeah. So compare nine hours to an hour and a half, and, you know, like, obviously you're going to make a more, you know, layered content and more engaging content. I mean, that's why you think about, like, game of thrones that's why that was such a success because you're able to build a narrative for years Mm -hmm. quite literally while you know you can make a marvel movie and it'll have everyone's attention for two months and then you'll forget about it so you think it's easier to make a show than it gives you more artistic liberty yes it gives you more artistic liberty it's i don't think it's easier than making a movie but i do think um there's there's more freedom to it Yes. yes and and i also think like Making a movie is a huge risk, especially for a huge studio. Like, I think about the ramifications of something like Morbius bombing. I mean, you show Morbius, <laughs> and Morbius was in like every theater, and it bombed, and then you know it became this big meme. They brought it back, and it bombed again. Like, that's not nothing. You know, there were ramifications mm-hmm. for that. That is mm-hmm. millions upon millions upon millions of dollars down the drain, putting in every single movie theater in the country and, like, many, many in the world. Yeah, Morbius got fired. While for shows, you can just kind of put it on a <laughs> streaming service and see where it goes. So yeah. That's that's pretty fair, actually, because I'm – I don't correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that the streaming service just buys your show. 
it's it's something uh, it like depends that. on like the well because like arcane is a netflix like dedicated thing like that's mm-hmm. a netflix it's original, an original yeah. Um, yeah so netflix had to yeah but there but from... there are other things where like well no i think it was like created and like netflix was a part of like that creation process mm-hmm. i don't think it was like made and then netflix bought it yeah i think netflix was probably involved in like the production the things like that yes. because they need the money <laughs> I... so they're like okay well we're gonna have oh, we have this idea you go to netflix okay. netflix like okay we'll have it be a netflix original we'll give you a bunch of money you do whatever you want i was actually looking at an interview a few days ago with a screenwriter who was on a hit reality television show survivor um and uh what he was saying was he uh basically he made this show he made a pilot for it and like had the whole script for the entire show laid out he went to every single like like uh television network and every single streaming service because you have to pitch it i mean Netflix isn't going to just put something they don't know what it is on their streaming service. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And all of them rejected it. Every single one. Because, like, they, you know, every single company wants, you know, something that is going to appeal to everyone or appeal to a large group of people and also not, like, make everybody mad at them. So that's that's a whole different thing when it comes to, to marketing television shows. And that's maybe why it might be more difficult to make a TV show compared to like if you're working for Marvel because Marvel's such a, it's almost too big to fail. You can throw like anything in a wall and millions upon millions of people will see it. Yeah, I think that's kind of the same thing as Netflix. Um, a Netflix original can flop mm-hmm. and it's, the ramifications are not super, you know, bad. Not I mean, really. they, they might be bad, but in terms of like the big picture of Netflix as a company, they're not. Yeah. It doesn't really hurt them. Yeah, I mean, they're not starving. No. Though, I mean, they're they're dropping a lot. I mean, you know, they have less and less like movies than ever, and there are so many streaming services now. They got to get on those bundles, man. Yeah, there's so many streaming services now that it's like you know Disney Plus, Hulu, HBO Max, Paramount Plus, what have you, Amazon Prime. You know, like it's it's a new form of cable almost. It's a whole new thing. Yeah, Hulu unironically launched Hulu Plus Plus. Plus, <laughs> uh, which I think is pretty funny. I think it's, it's funny. actually a funny marketing technique. Yeah. Um, it's also pretty good to just have three pluses behind your name. And it really is three additional, like, yeah. huge bundles added onto your deal. Yeah. Hulu, ESPN Plus, Disney Plus, you know, all together. And it's it's a new cable package. Yeah. It's, a, it's a literally a cable package for a new generation. Yeah. And uh, that, that makes me interested as to what you were saying earlier with, like, the, the idea of having you know, uh, basically TV networks go to Twitch or to go online Mm -hmm. because it really is, it feels like it could be a natural evolution. Like, because when you turn on the TV and you you see CNN, I mean, what's more accessible? Getting a cable TV package, which CNN doesn't care about, or going on the internet and just like going to Twitch. Mm -hmm. I I think going to their website or going to their website for that matter. Yeah, I'm curious if you guys can think of any others because we were talking about it just a second ago. What are other TV shows based off of video games? Well, I mean, I know that like in the 80s and 90s, there was like Sonic shows and Mario shows. Okay, but those yeah. were in like the time when like you're trying to sell like action figures yeah. or toys and stuff like that. And that's not really a thing anymore. Is there not a Mortal Kombat show? Uh, well, I, I know that there was a Castlevania mm-hmm. show on Netflix. I watched yeah, that show. That's, I did and know that was that pretty one. good. Um, there was... They had the the Sonic Boom show. That was, but that was another like kids show, um, many a uh, few years ago. I'm um, hearing from our producer in the back that there was a Cyberpunk 2077. Yes, there was a Cyberpunk show. Oh, yes, I, I didn't know about by, that. by uh, Trigger Studio that came out recently. So there's, and that's oh, actually sorry. reinvigorated interest in the game, despite of how big <laughs> Cyberpunk flop was. was yeah as a flop which i find very interesting too and it's making people be like actually they've really fixed the game and actually maybe it's not that bad <laughs> it's still, it's still you have to believe us 2077 uh, but yeah there that's, was a cuphead show too that's another big one yeah cuphead yeah, I, that seems like one that's super accessible yeah i watched a little bit of that and it's I was on like, netflix it was like this is a kid show it's all right was that the one that was was it's, it like a pure show or is it like a choose your own adventure show because Netflix does that now, too. Yeah, yeah. They do that sometimes. They did that with, like, Tom and Jerry, I think. They did it with um, the, the Black Mirror movie. Right. Which was very that. good. Yeah. Um, Bandersnatch. Bandersnatch, yes. Yeah, Me no. and my friends spent an all-afternoon going through the Bandersnatch. So did I. <laughs> I did it with my 
sisters. I think. Um, there is a Mortal Kombat show as well. It okay. does not look good, so <laughs> I doubt not. it was. There was also a Donkey Kong Country yes, animation show was. in the nineties. I've seen that show. It's, this looks. It's a just, musical show. It's a mu- two what? songs per episode. Um, it's nice. not. It's not very good. That's real though, and it's <laughs> yeah. the worst computer animation you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> And it's very, it's very, it's it's a good ironic watch once in a while, but it it's pretty terrible. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly. So there's also Pac Man and the Ghost of the Adventures, right, and yeah. then the Super Bros Super Show, mm-hmm. and those also both looks really bad. Yeah, and sure it really looks like really old. There's also a Zelda show that came out in the yes, 80s. Yes, that's where Excuse Me Princess comes from, and that's an old meme. Uh, and uh, yeah, so really? but but once again, there's, there's a lot of those are like 80s shows designed yeah. to sell toys or designed to yeah. sell the games. Well, I mean, obviously, something like Castlevania is it's a show first and a game series later, in my opinion, considering it's like its own narrative and isn't attached to the games. While um, like Arcane is similar. Arcane's not really attached to the game. Arcane is just like these are the characters that happen to come from this game. This is like, and when you think about like League as a whole, what Arcane showcases of like things from League is like such a tiny, tiny portion True. that I think they did a really good job by focusing on that because they're allowed to go like super in depth because they don't have to worry about including so much. They're like, all right, we're going to include five characters from the show who are all from this one region, yep. one very specific part, and we're going to show their evolution over nine episodes. It's it's good promotion for like the ser- or I guess the game as a whole mm-hmm. without like saying buy this toy buy this toy or buy this game buy this yeah. game I think it's honestly a better uh, marketing tactic. Well, it was a large marketing t- tactic. Oh, for no, sure. I'm not saying it wasn't. I'm saying but it wasn't but it's as different. it wasn't as in your face. That, no, that's it, what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. it wasn't in your face. The show at least was not in your face. No. However, the main characters of the show happened to be the best champions to play in the game like mm-hmm. for a while. Um, Production's yeah. squ- squinting at me right now. <laughs> yeah, like, the, like the Jinx Caitlyn meta. You don't remember yeah, that? It was that just was the same it was time. Jinx that's Caitlyn true. for every single pro and, game for and, that's true. Probably a whole split. And beyond that, Jinx is basically like the face of League, right? I mean, I would she say is now, so. yeah, yeah, for well, sure. I thought so maybe before, but maybe I'm crazy. Mo- uh, maybe a little bit before, but definitely now. She's mm-hmm. like the most recognizable, most and, like. And that's a great marketing tactic yeah. for for creating a mascot almost because League has so many champions that like you need one. Yeah, so. you need to narrow down on one, and in that one's that's like easily accessible. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, people really liked Arcane um, because Did you, you didn't have it? to you didn't have to play League. Did you watch it? Yeah, of course. Okay, I didn't know if you. You're um, <laughs> so behind on all forms of media. I wouldn't surprise me if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did watch that one though. Very good. Um, however, yeah, people really liked it because they didn't have to play League. Right, yeah. they could just watch it as a show, and that was it. Yeah. Um, I have a fr- I have a couple friends who are, are normies, you know, they'll play video games, mm-hmm. and they loved the show. They absolutely loved it, um, and they really liked how they didn't need to, you know. Yeah. Know anything? My sister watched it, and uh, she was like, "Oh yeah, I watched Arcane. It was really good." And um, I was like, "That's great." And I was like, "Don't play League. <laughs> I was like, it's not worth your time. I don't want you to get like so invested into something that is, you know, but, not I mean, worth it." But that- that's it, that's I what mean, it does. There were lots of like Reddit threads, people talking like, "Hey, like this makes me want to this one makes me want to get back into League or makes me want to play League for the first time." And that's that's a re- another reason yeah. why to bring it all back. Why Worlds is so huge right now. Why it's like bigger yeah. than it's ever been. And wh- another reason why League is just growing and growing. I was actually going to throw it back as well, but a different aspect. I know. You all tried right. to bring it all together, Joey. It's my <laughs> thing. All right. It's true. It's true. Uh, you, Ethan said that he doesn't want, what was it, your sister to, to play yeah. League. Um, however, you've played League and you've kind of found your yeah. career through it, right? That's true. Which is really cool. Um, I think a lot of people in esports, at least that's how I was as well. Um, when I first got into the competitive side of it, and I'm sure you were the same way, I just really wanted to somehow be involved with it yeah. as, as a career, as a job, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, I mean, I always have wanted to find something I've known since I was like probably a sophomore in high school that I wanted to do something with like public speaking or something where I could kind of like entertain in a certain way. Um, I got that opportunity when I was in high school. Like I worked on a radio show for a year. I did casting for two years. Um, and then finding like this through league and then seeing that there was like a viable option to get in and do something like that and still be involved in the competitive scene, which I enjoy so much and I find so entertaining, but in a way that I know I can be successful at. All right. Well, I think that about wraps it up. 
for this episode of the Respawn Podcast. Thank you so much, Ethan, for joining us. I don't want to stop, Joey. Thanks for having me. I don't want to stop either, but we've hit the hour Can we keep talking? I have to show... Uh, Production's telling us no. (laughs) I have to show Colin this Yeet song. Uh, You do. (laughs) That's true. You do. You do. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for listening, and uh, we'll catch you later.